Forge Cup Ministries is a Bible-based church. Our mission is to bring people to Jesus Christ. God's word is above all things. It's sharper than any double-aged sword, penetrating to your soul and spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit and open your heart as you make God's word the standard for your life. Promise TV, bringing people to Jesus Christ. He that wakes up to the Lord, a powerful ever. He that wakes up to the Lord, a powerful ever. Let the glory be above. Oh, the end. Let the glory be above.
your mercy, your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, shall we clap for Jesus? We thank God for his mercy. You may be seated. Our viewers, we acknowledge your presence. Those who are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Top Star Channel 112, we appreciate your support. Continue watching Promise TV. What we are receiving here, you too, you are going to receive your own. Amen. Praise the Lord. T turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are welcome in the presence of God. Say it again. I want to continue with the message. Dwell in the presence of God. If you read the Bible, in Psalms 122, verse 1, David said, I was very glad, or I rejoiced, when they say, let us go to the house of God. He knew that life is there. Blessings are there. Everything is there. Dwell in the presence of God. If you remain in the presence of God, your future is secured. You are protected. There is that assurance that nothing that will come and snatch you out of his presence until you serve his purpose in your life. Tell your neighbor, say, dwell in the presence of God. I can't hear you. Say it again. Yes. Dwell in the presence of God so that you achieve your goal, like King David. If you follow his life, you realize that David had more enemies, more enemies than friends, to the extent whereby even his own son, Absalom, became a labor against the father. He wanted to take over the kingship from the father. But because David was always, always consulting God, meaning he was dwelling in the presence of God. He cannot move or do anything without asking God. If it is war, David would go on, on his knees and ask God, can I go and face these people? If God said, don't go, he will remain in the presence of God. And no one will follow him there because he is covered and protected. Life is not money. Life is not food. Life is not vehicle or clothes or marriage or children. Life is Jesus. If you remain in the presence of God, you are calling life. If you cannot remain in the presence of God, you are carrying problems in your body. Majority of, you know, us, we may look, you know, good outside, but the inside, ha, huh, it's a problem. You, can, you cannot even uh, explain your feelings anymore. You cannot. Because one second in the hands of Satan hmm, is 20 years. If you don't know. He will put his own things in your body. But if you remain in his presence, they start assurance. Let's go to Psalms 180, verse 7. Let's at a chakulabe, ngo limuchen chakwe. Kuti akulaba fie, ngo afumina kunse. But ngo lifie muchen chakwa lesa. Let's at a chakitation. No. If God might become, you know, your friend, your partner in life, there is that assurance and confidence, the courage to face every mountain. Let's go to verse 7. The Lord is with me. He is my helper. 
I look in triumph on my enemies. Eight, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. I hope you understand this. I like it. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Nine, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. This is the confession of someone who knows that God is on my side. He was not just talking about God because he heard it from somewhere. No. He was talking about his own experience. How God saved him. How God, you know, fought for him. And how God rescued him from kings and queens. Even within his own family, God fought for David, a great king. What made him to be a great king? Because he was dwelling in the presence of God. Don't trust what you have or what you have become today or how many people who are supporting you. It is Bible. It's here. Listen. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. Human beings can follow you if there's something, you know, which they want from you. Human beings can support you if they realize that they are going to benefit out of your life. Human beings can follow you if they discover that there's something that you are calling and they need what you are calling. You see them following you. You see them respecting you. If you put your trust in them, you are a failure. It's just a matter of time. You are what? A failure. David did not trust anyone apart from Jehovah God. He depends on him and relies on him because he realized that all these things that have been, you know, facing, not even my brother or my sister or my sons, only God Almighty came to my rescue. Dwelling in the presence of God it doesn't mean that you need to be inside the church every day. How are you going to eat? That is the mistake some of you are making. No, Pastor, Did I say that? You are dwelling in the presence of God means what? You live a blameless life before God Almighty. Your heart is pure. I'm walking here. I'm carrying the presence of God. If I encounter a witch whom I may not see with my eyes, and that witch is throwing uh, his power or charms. It is the presence of God that will react against those things. I'll be busy walking. And God will tell me that, have you seen this? I have defeated one witch now. Look at this. I'll be busy. It is a blameless life that you need to live. Someone who cannot destroy his own brother. Someone who cannot stand against is our own sister. You become blameless and you attract his presence and you remain in the presence of God. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in human. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. There is no human being here on earth who is powerful. If you are powerful, there's a period. He said that you'll be powerful when you are young. Are you going to be powerful when you reach 80 or 90? The answer is no. So if you trust your father, your uncle, because your uncle has got money, or your uncle has got power, it's just a matter of time that your trust will lead you into disappointment. But if you trust God, Hebrews 13 verse 8. He is the same yesterday, today, and he. No one can take over his position. No one can share his position with him. Is him alone occupy that throne of mercy. So if you trust in humans or maybe kings and queens, 
you are a failure. Because one day, that your father who is a chief will die. And someone who will take over that position. Who is going to be there for you? Can your, your father answer you from the graveyard? Only Jesus. Only who? There is no human being who is powerful. If you are a police officer, you feel that you are powerful, go and look at the, your age. Your retirement is on the way coming. I'm telling you. Go and look at your NLC. You see that your retirement age is on the way coming. Meaning what? You are not powerful. But if you follow Jesus, there is no retirement age. There is no one to take over from him. You become powerful and you remain what? Powerful. If you are a lawyer and you feel good that you are eating money, others are crying, you eat money, you feel good, you intimidate people, one day you lose your sight. Oh, you don't understand this. One day you lose what? Your sight. And you say you are powerful. You are a learned person. I am not saying being a lawyer is bad. No, no, no. But the way we conduct ourselves in this life, we are forgetting that God created you for his end purpose so that you remain in his presence. So that you remain in his hands and you remain as tools of God Almighty. But instead, we choose to follow this world and become the enemy of God. Anyone, I mean, anyone who cannot dwell in the presence of God, you are the enemy of God. Because outside God, you cannot speak his language. Outside God, you cannot defend his mission. Outside God, you cannot live a holy life here. It is only in his presence where you can live a holy life. Are you there, people of God? Let's go. Verse 9. I mean 10. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. All the nations, that is the life of King David. He had so many enemies. Do you know, people of God, that if God is on your side, if God is on your side, I mean you remain, I mean you dwell in the presence of God. Even if you bring all witches and wizards, all satanic powers all over the world against such a person. You are fighting a long battle. And you are testing God Almighty. Because there is no way you can enter in his presence and you start killing his children. And God will, will remain silent watching you. No, he will react. He will react again and start, you know, agenda. David is telling that all the nations surrounded me. But in the name of the Lord, I cut them what? Down. Just one prayer. Prayer is not fasting, people of God. You cannot make yourself holy. No. It is dwelling in the presence of God and then you become holy. It is from there you receive instruction. How to go about it. How to pray. Is it total? Is it partial? Prayer is not according to your situation. David, if David were to live according to what he was going through and facing, I'm sure the battle before him was more than his power. He said, in the name of the Lord, I cut them what? Do you know that prayer changes things? Ah, you don't understand this. Prayer changes things. You can just kneel down inside your house. Without even talking and say, Father, let it be known that among the millions of people who are here on earth, I am your son who dwell in your presence. I command that thing to stop in Jesus' name. You are in the presence of God. You hear your father say, yes, Sonny, it is done. You walk out. Others will be celebrating. Oh, hey, 
It is only one person who's, who dwells where in the presence of wonder. And he prayed maybe two years or three years before. And it came to pass. People who doesn't even know how it came to pass, they'll be busy celebrating, celebrating, celebrating. One with Jesus is majority. One with what? Your voice is powerless and meaningless to the spiritual battle. Your money, your house is powerless, meaningless, and useless to the spiritual battle. But dwelling in the presence of God, you become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. They will discover you even before others know that there's a man or a woman like this. Look at Moses before he came to this life. He was discovered. Look at our Savior. He was discovered. But God Almighty cannot allow the enemy of salvation to stop his mission. This is why you need to dwell in the presence of God. There you never go wrong. Praise the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. This prayer is not... Um, when the Sean say, be blind, be blind, be blind. You are out of the presence of, you are making noise. You are provoking them. You need to be sure. If you are not sure of what you are saying in the name of the Lord, you are provoking Satan to destroy you. But in the name of the Lord, I can stand without fear or shivering and declare war against Satan. Because I know that it is not my battle. I am in the presence of God. Dwelling in the presence of God will give you that courage, determination, the confidence, the unquestionable character that can push you forward to face your mountain. Because you are in the presence of God. And you are assured of your protection. No one can stand you. No one can fight you. No one can eliminate you. Look at David. The way he died. David died, you know, in the hands of a virgin. King Saul tried to harm the young man. He realized that oh, this boy, you remember what happened to him? He followed David with his, you know, forces, commandos. 3,000 special forces surrounded King Saul. David was like on the other side. Because David was dwelling in the presence of God. The presence of God strike King Saul and his people. They slept like dead people. Here is a, a boy, King David, coming. He marched all the 3,000 soldiers and reached the king. He even collected his own jar and his spear. The commander said, why not? The Lord has delivered this king into your hands. Kill him now. David said, no, I cannot kill him. He was anointed by God. The presence of God was always there to guide David, not to take, you know, any step outside the presence of God. He just collected a jar and a spear. And after he reached there, then he shouted, he called the commander. Then King Saul said, David, is that you, my son? He said, yes. King Saul said, my son, I'm going back. Come home now. He realized that this boy is dangerous. It is not your age or how much money do you have in your account? How many properties do you have? What title are you calling? It is only people who can fear you. Can the owner of me, all the minerals in the world fear you? The answer is no. The money that you have came from him. Even the sense, the blend that you are using to become what you have become came from where? Is it your education that gives you your blend? Look at you. Look at you now. 
He gave you this blend. Maybe 0.1% of your, 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 your thinking. And the one who created you, he has 10 or 10 million percent. 0.1%. Then he, you are blagging. You can live outside his presence. You can live out. He will look at you and say, look at this one. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, there is God in heaven. He say it again, say there is God in heaven. I'm telling you, he watches everything. He sees everything. If you dwell in his presence, he will guide you, he will lead you, he will protect you and bless you and control you until you achieve his purpose that's when you just say sonny or daughter come back i can assure you people of god dwelling in the presence of god no one can limit your life or end your life prematurely or controls whatever you are doing it is when you know you decide to live outside his presence. There you allow the enemy to take over your life. Are you there? I like this. Let's go to 10 and 11. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. Meaning, all the enemies that surrounded your life, if you dwell in the presence of God, you can just stand and say, in the name of Jesus, I paralyze your network. And it is done. It is what? Mm? When you are moving like this one, for example, when King David was, you know, learning away from uh, King Saul, he was moving with what? The presence of God. When you are moving like this, and where you are passing, they are witches and wizards. They are evil power. See me, I am here. Before I reach there, the power of God will reach there. To do what? To clear my way. So that whatever you have put here is already neutralized and consumed. I'll be walking freely. I'll be walking what? Spiritual snakes will be running away. Marine power will be what? Learning away. Satanic power will be what? Learning. Because I, you become fire. If you don't know. Not in a few months, you will be able to get the fire. You will be able to get the fire. You will be able Thou shall not touch. They will touch you. It is the presence of God that can deny them not to touch you. Not your mouth. If you say, Thou shall not touch me. They will look at you spiritually. Is it is he is he really meaning what he's saying? If they discover that you are touchable, they will touch you and afflict you. Oh. Are you in the presence of God? Are you sure? Eh, finish the salande of Popo Mushide. Do you know your neighbor? That is, this is what we are missing. If I sit with my brother, before I sit, you know, comfortably, I need to screen him to know the type of the person who is next to me. Otherwise, maybe the brother is carrying power. He will start now putting his evil power in my body. That is the danger. Before you sit comfortably, you need to check where you are. In the presence of God, we are conscious of what we are doing. You cannot sit comfortably like this. I need to check this brother. Maybe he has got, you know, a walk up. Before you sit comfortably, Check the environment. Not the people who are surrounded you. If you realize that they are calling evil weapons, fire them now. Cut 
cut them down in the name of Jesus. Cut them down in the name of Jesus. There you become free. Even at your working place, you must know the people that you are working with. I cannot be comfortable but you are in jingle and chito. No, check them. If they realize that, oh, you are carrying the presence of God, they will start now hating you. You will start facing what? Hatred. There you know that you are dangerous. And you will be comfortable because no one can take you away from that place. You dominate that place because you are carrying what? The presence of God. That is King David for you. He dominated Jerusalem. Despite you know having so many what? Enemies. The man dominated the city. And he became what? Great king. Who made him to be a great king? God Almighty. Dwell in the presence of God. You can read and read Psalms 15 verse 1. You can read it when you go home. So that you discover more. The benefit of you dwelling where? In the presence of God. Even your business, your money, everything. Like our children will be sitting for exams this week. They have to carry the presence of God. Leaving our homes, our children must carry what? The presence of God. Even if they encounter those who are using people's blame, they cannot temper with their mind. Because the presence of God cannot permit them. They are my children. I'm in charge. Dwell in the presence of God. Listen to this. They surrounded me on every side. But in the name of the Lord, I cut them down. This is verse 11. They can surround you. And they can even feel good that, oh, we have surrounded this person. But your, your, your God cannot allow them to swallow you. It is you to cut them. I am a people with some good study. They have a problem. It's not a good prayer. And God is not interested. Remain in the presence of God. Like a son and a father. Remain with your father. You can ask your father of anything that you want. And your father will be there for you. If it is sickness that has come, your father is there. If it is money that you want, your father is there. And like when your father, you know, bless you, you learn away from your father. When problem comes, no, Bashima people to refu akwama people. I don't want to go there. Let me restrict myself. Mm. But take it serious. Take it serious. Verse 12, they swarmed me. They swarmed around me like bees. But they were consumed as quickly as burning what? Thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. Listen to 13. Those who are having problems, challenges. I was pushed back and about to fall. But the Lord helped me. Situation can, you know, bless you down. But God Almighty will raise you from that, you know, ground to say, no, you are my son, my daughter. Dwell in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, say, dwell in the presence of God. Do you know the meaning of this? Let me ask you, is there anyone among the sons of Jesse with the history like King David? Hmm? I'm talking to you, church. Is there anyone among the sons of Jesse with the history like King David? No. Why David become, you know, different? He was dwelling in the presence. Remember, even the time when Samuel was sent to go and anoint the son, one of Jesse's son, David was not even on the list according to his father. David was in the bush. It was God who remembered David. He could not allow the anointing to come down. Because 
Elo kwika la mche nchi hako wale sate kumula ndapakanua. Kumu kwata. Ngo wale mula ndafe pakanua. Satana kakwipana ma problems. Ngo wale mula le sate kwete amaka ya kwale sa. Ule tende kate kute akupela bipi. Kute akupela poverty. All kinds of problems will heap on you. And you will say, hey, now call the one you call. Because he knew that you are not calling him and you are not even there. But if Satan realized that this man, this woman is dwelling in the presence of, he will not touch you. You remember the story about uh, Job. Satan could not attack, you know, Job with his own power. He had to go and get what? A permission. He could not attack him. He has that tactics of evil. But he could not attack Job. Because Job was a friend or he was in the presence of God. He had to go to say, permit me. God said, go. He said, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure if I... He said, go. Because God knew that as long as his heart is here with me, the, 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 the body cannot, you know, react against me. Because it is the spirit that gives what? Life. He went and afflicted Job. He killed and destroyed his business. The man who was a wealth man become poor. But in his heart, the man was rich. Lepros all over his body. But inside his, his, his heart, the man was rich and clean. It was the flesh. The inside was just okay. You cannot understand this unless if you are in the spirit. He went back again. You remember that it was two times. The first one was wealth. The second one, Satan has said, is skin to what? If you will not kiss you. Are you there? Come on, church. The first one, Satan had targeted is what? Wealth. And the children. And God permitted him to, you can go. The second one, after he realized that Job is, you know, remain faithful, he went back again. He said, permit me now to touch his flesh if he will not kiss you. God said, go. But you are not permitted to touch his life. Come on, people of God. Why are you permitting your enemy to touch your life? Why are you permitting poverty to strike your business? Because they have to go and ask God to permit them for them to strike your life. If God cannot allow them, they cannot strike you. It's just that, you know, you don't understand the power that you, are, you know you have been given by God Almighty. Satan had to go to God Almighty and beg him for him to attack Job. What are you learning? No one can bring you down unless if God Almighty allows it to happen. He went back and he struck the man. After everything, Job was restored and his wealth was doubled by two. Uyu <laughs> Nechungulu ala pala Na kasuba ala pala Na mubu kotefe Lianya bantu wale ndati Abano mba na chipua Bantu wale landesyo Lesa lela ndata chipuile Padifyo walasha before taulaya Dwell in the presence of God Who made you to become a great person At the end of your journey And people will celebrate your life but human beings who continue discouraging you to say, Imwe no mba na chipua, Imwe no mba tapari fio muka chitabu shefio le sale landa. Why are you wasting your time? Hmm? Finally, ya di fika kale. Le sale tupala kale. We are, we are great people. And we are on the way coming. You are going to feel our impact. It's just a matter of time. They are going to feel your impact because you are dwelling in the presence of God. It's just a matter of time. God bless you.